we're still here, Bob. Wherever that might be. I was telling you what a job they were having trying to get the rockets to fire. Well, they've finally got it sorted and we're on the move again at last. We still haven't got clear of this cloud, mind you. And now the emergency CO2 extractor's broken. We've been told not to do any running about. As if we were going to. Victoria is really ill. And Rosie and the captain are still stuck in the lift on Gantry 4. Can't see how they'll be able to survive out there much longer. And Elliot. But we finished checking the computer systems, and um, James is just taking a final look at the hydraulic mechanism. So um, we should have you out in two shakes of a duck's tail. So uh, we'll just sit tight, really. Thank God we've got you to cheer us up, Bimbo Melfi. Well, what am I supposed to say? Not a lot. You see, I don't think it can be the hydraulics. I think the computer operating sequence is jammed. Then why doesn't Petra clear it? Or well, why does Petra keep on showing us her holiday snaps of the South Atlantic? Uh, how are you doing, James? I've reset the manual control. The cabling's intact. There's no damage that I can see. You do realise if we can't get the lift working, the only way back to Gantry 4 is back along the maintenance shaft. Oh, my God. If we can't get the lifts working, Elliot and Rosie are dead. I do know that. I'm not totally insensitive, Chantal. But I don't know why you pretend to be. Oh, for heaven's sake, don't be so pious. There's nothing wrong here that I can tell. Uh, yes, thank you, James. Come back in now, please. I just don't know why you have to sneer at people all the time. Sarah. Yeah. <laughs> Victoria. I have something to drink. No. Victoria, you've got to. It's drinking that makes me sick. It makes my stomach hurt so much. He's got to drink something, even if it's just a little. Sarah? No. Please drink something, Victoria. Look, it doesn't matter if you're sick, as long as you can keep some of it down. Come on. Victoria. Any change in visibility, Chantal? No, still about 6,000 metres. If our calculations are right, this stuff should be thinning by now. What's that? Hydrogen again. Oh, it's as though there's nothing left in the universe except for hydrogen and sulphur. And a bit of muck and ice. Just a hint of argon and hydrofluoric acid. OK, Fimba. I'm back in in the airlock seal. Well done, James. Let's try again, shall we? Petra, reprime Comsem lift system. Commencing safety checks. Well, this is it, folks. Come on, Petra. Safety checks complete. System reset and primed. This might just work. Petra, reactivate lift system. Lift system reactivated. We've done it! <laughs> It took so long. Petra was going haywire. Anyway, we've fired the rockets and we think we're out into open space. Another couple of hours and there'll be something different on the scan. I think I could do with a drink. Oh, no. We had to send James out to look at the manual controls. Anyway, in the event Petra sorted it out herself, though heaven only knows why she's shut the lifts down in the first place. Uh, are you all right, Elliot? Yes. Well, I I'm sorry it took so long. Obviously, we had to give priority to breaking clear of the plasma ball. Bob, come on. We've still got to find our way out of this, Mark. Rosie! Thank God they got you out. How is she? Fine. Fine. I want to go home. I want my father. Yeah, it's all right, Victoria. We'll be home soon. She's drifting about a bit now. I want to go home. Unless we get some fluids into her, she's not going anywhere. Oh, God, Piers. What about Medicom? We haven't got Medicom. Surely you can do something, surely. 
Petra, try 387087. Did I leave my book in here? It's been confiscated. Offensive literature. It's the joke. It's around here somewhere, Elliot. Where are we today? Going anywhere interesting? Well, we're 416 degrees southwest south of Ganymede. That was 12 hours ago. We're still on course. Funny we don't seem to have got to anywhere yet. There's your horrible book over there. You've no idea, have you? Where are you going? Where are you taking this ship? Or what you're doing? We're doing our best. God help us. Well, is he right? I don't know. Oh, for heaven's sake! Will you stop getting at me? What's the matter with that? Oh, go on, then. Oh, no, I thought I had the key. Oh, you can't concentrate, can you? I have that effect on people. It's the force of my personality. Oh, what a little cutie. Can I just have your attention for a minute, please? Look, I know the air's thinning and activity should be kept to a minimum, but that is no excuse for desultory habits. We are moving and should be out into clear space very soon. Hey, I hope it's the old discipline and morale speech. Yeah. In the meantime, can we please do something about the state of this ship? We're running out of oxygen and you want us to wash floors. Well, the build-up of CO2 in the air supply is only very gradual, Timmy. It's not an excuse to lower standards. Besides, little heroes like you shouldn't have to wallow about in a pigsty. It isn't right and proper. Now, can I have some volunteers, please? I don't think Timmy knows how to wash a floor, do you, Timmy? Yeah, well, don't look at me. I'm not Mrs. Mott. Oh, come on. My father did not pay space college fees so I could fill dustbins. Thanks, girls. I knew I could rely on you. Come on, girls. Tidy out my pigsty for me. Oh. oh! Excuse me, Elliot. Landed, have we? Found our way back to Ganymede yet? Largest moon in the solar system. Surprised we haven't bumped into it. Captain. And calling me Captain, too. What's the matter, son? Fed up with running the ship already? We'd like you to resume command of the ship, sir. I bet you would. We all have the highest confidence in you. You go mutiny one minute and ask me back the next. And I didn't set this course and I'm not taking responsibility for what happens. We don't want you in command just to take responsibility. But that's what command is. Taking responsibility for this ship and all the young lives aboard it. What if we hit a lump of debris? What if we get struck by lightning again and another module drops off? I don't know. Well, let's hope you don't find out. Because it's all down to you, and it's staying down to you. I suppose we ought to do something about the bathroom. It is pretty disgusting. Are you mad? Hours to live and you're worried about cleaning the shower? Who says it's ours? Why else is Rosie getting all stroppy about morale if the CO2 build-up isn't getting critical? It's because of what went on between her and Elliot in the lift. It's made her snappy. I never knew anything went on. Oh, yeah, it's all over the ship. What is? Well, it's not really our place to say. But was it Rosie or was it Elliot? But one version of events has it that Elliot was a disappointed man. Yeah, and another that Rosie was a disappointed woman. I don't ever put Rosie down as a raver. Oh, my mother said, always watch the quiet ones. Elliot's had a thing about Rosie since the beginning of time. I reckon it's a sign of a guilty conscience when you start getting obsessive about cleanliness. So what are you going to do to improve morale, Timmy? I thought you were supposed to be a hero. Heroes don't wash floors. <gasps> Timmy's right. If we haven't got anything to lose, we might as well enjoy ourselves. How? Well, what have you always wanted to do? Learn ice skating, marry Bob and have three children. How can anyone be so suburban? I wonder where Piers is. Piers? What do you want him for? You don't want to do anything rash. No? They said there's nothing to worry about. I believe that, you'll believe anything. Then again, I suppose you would. Look, if my days are numbered, I know who I'm spending them with. See you. You just want an excuse. Never mind morale. There's a definite slacking of morals round here. They said that we would be in clear space at any time. The whole lot of them. They're at it all the time. Timmy, would you like to come and pray with me? Uh, not just now, Anna. Hi, Piers. All right, got to see how she's doing. Yeah. She was terrible. Yes. When you want to give fluids, you usually give the patient's details to Medicom and then it calculates the correct constituents of the fluid and the rate of infusion. So, what are you doing? Guessing. That bottle is water and electrolytes. Can't do her any harm. 
going to put it through fairly slowly at first, then if there's no improvement, we'll speed things up a bit. Poor Victoria. Mm, well, she's dehydrated. The problem is, is to get the fluids in without the Medicon pump. That's computer operated. Well, what isn't? We aren't. We're going to have to use gravity like they did before they had computers. Here you are. Hold this up. Thank you. Right. That's to prevent any air getting into her vein. Keep your finger on that. Okay. Okay. And just a few drops per minute. Right. Can I put it down now? No. Hey? We're using gravity, remember? We're using my arm and it's tied already. Can't we fix it to something? Brilliant. What a mind. Tim, what's happening now? Oh, not a lot. I was at a loose end, so I thought I'd check out the movies. I can't bear it. I can't work. I can't think. What will happen to us? Well, I'm sure we'll be right in the end. Oh, please don't leave me by myself. Her Linda's gone chasing after men. She's got no self-control. Oh, well, Tim, I always do what they tell me. I believe in what I'm told. They said that we would get clear of Ganymede. Fine, I believed it. But now I can't see anything and we're running out of air. Well, I'm sure there's enough until we get back to Space City. There isn't. It's getting thinner by the hour. I'm panicking, Tim. Don't leave me. It's terrible when I panic. Look, you saved us all. You and Fiona made Petra do what you said. You know what's happening. I know you do. You can help me, Tim, can't you? How is it? Well, it's up again. It hurts. Well, can't you give her something for the pain? No, she's too weak to have any more just yet. Victoria, I'm going to have a look at your stomach. I'll be very careful, all right? Yeah, if it's swollen. I'm going to be sick again. Hey, Linda. Yeah. <laughs> What's happening? It's a perforated appendix. The onset of peritonitis. The peritoneal cavity is infected. And? And without Medicom, I can't use the laser to remove the infection. She needs antibodies, but I don't give her any. I'm going to try some wide-spectrum antibacterials. <clears throat> My grandmother had her was taken out when she was little. Lucky woman. Now, this has to release just a little bit at a time. Is it dangerous? There might be an adverse reaction, yes. Piers? If I don't, she'll get toxemia. But is that worse? Yep, I'm afraid so. We drop a moonshine with me, Petal? No, thanks. Doesn't do my head much good. Funny, it seems to do mine a lot of good. You'll have a dram with me, Doctor? Yeah, thanks. I'll have a small one. How's Victoria? Not too good. Without Medicom, it's hopeless. I can't synthesize antibodies. I can't use the laser because I can't use the catheter to introduce it. Then I couldn't see what I was doing anyway because the screen's not working. Can't you cure her without Medicom? I mean, what did they used to do for appendixes before? They'd open them up. I'd cut through the abdomen, through the fat, the muscle layer in the peritoneum, remove the infected organ and sew them back up again. Surely opening the abdomen would increase the chance of infection. Yes, of course. Well, didn't they have to make them unconscious, paralyse them? Oh, perhaps. Oh, come on, we're only talking about 30 years ago. You're not talking about the Stone Age. Are you going to do it? Well, I don't know if I can. Well, good luck. I have to get back to the bridge. Even if I did operate, it's just so dangerous. I don't fancy her chance of surviving at all. What you've got to ask yourself is if her chances are so poor, what's the point? Oh? With the situation as it is, I'd think twice before I cause the girl any unnecessary suffering. If you catch my drift. Well, my eyes are going funny from staring at the screen so long. Oh, take a break. We've been here for hours. No, I'll be okay for a while. Hey, do you know what happened in the lift? I know Rose isn't talking to Elliot. Wow. Of all the terrible things that could happen, and indeed have happened, I'm grateful for one small mercy. It wasn't me stuck in a lift with Elliot for nine hours. <laughs> Oh, it's like those awful forfeit games you used to play at school. Who would you least like to kiss? Who would you least like to be stuck in a lift with for nine hours? <laughs> they both got terrible tempers. And they gang up. 
I never realised how much they gang up before all this happened. How do you feel about Granola? OK. You've got to take people on trust. But if you find out they're lying to you for whatever reason, well... There's something about chocolate that has a narcotic effect. That's why it's so soothing. Take another deep breath. I know a lot of people who swear by exercise, but I find chocolate the only real thing for heavy stress. Didn't I bring some nuts? If you discover that people are lying to you, it can turn your whole universe upside down. Yeah. Try it. It's coming along. If people lie, well, you don't know what's what. Yeah. Mm, very nice, isn't it? I'm not afraid of dying. There's no point in being afraid. But my mother, she had a new baby, eight months old. Stefania. I've never seen her. And it I... needs more. And now, after I've tried and tried to do everything right, we're going to run out of air on the ship. And I'll never see my little sister ever. Now try that. Isn't it just perfect? Mmm. Uh, Rosie, my love. Ellie. I was just going to rustle up a sandwich, or we could go to the bar for a drink if you fancy it. Uh, there's no point in overdoing things. Elliot, this is your ship. It's in grave danger, and you are behaving with criminal irresponsibility. That's my business. I asked you for a drink, not a lecture, OK? And I wouldn't get into a lift with you again, Elliot, for a million ecus in a Swiss bank. The only excuse I can think of is temporary insanity. He said I was unstable, so Deedless Commission turned me down. Everything on Deedless has to be squeaky clean. You don't know how much I envied you and James being offered places. To think. It was Elliot calling me unstable. Him. <laughs> yes. Well, here we all are and who knows what will happen. I've no other regrets. I would have liked my own ship, I suppose. And there was someone I felt sorry about once. Uh, yes, well, it doesn't look as if any of us will make the deedless mission now. 90 over 50. How is she? Not too good. She's going into shock. What can we do? Nothing. Piers? Look, I can't use the laser and I haven't got the drugs to combat infection. There's no Medicon backup. I don't want to operate because she's virtually no chance of surviving the shock. You've got to try. You can't not try. There's no point, Rosie. The whole ship's going nowhere fast. Oh, it hurts. Oh, shh. Try and get some sleep now. But it hurts so much. Please stop it hurting. I'll try. Please, please help me. Nothing. Well, there we are, then. So quiet. I honestly thought... Yeah, I know you did. Come on, cheer up. What is it they used to say? The eternal silence of these infinite spaces is terrifies me. This is to make me feel better. You need some sleep. No. I want to work on the model in the lab again. If I made a mistake in the original calculation... Then you'd have found it when you checked it before. Anyway, I don't think it'll make much difference, huh? No. It's funny. You were going to Parkinson's Star. I was going back to Genève to teach. Look at us now. Not going anywhere. I never really intended to go on dealers. Just sort of fell into it by accident. I thought you were so keen. I am keen now. But I only really volunteered on the rebound after Susie went back to Earth and found another. The woman's mad. Obviously. I couldn't care less about Susie now. I was so unhappy then. I felt I needed to get away for 12 years. As far as possible. Poor James. If you were my boyfriend, I wouldn't do that to you. Is that an offer? Feel better now? Well, the thing is, to take it slowly. I'm so angry. But at least you've stopped panicking. I'm too full up to panic. Now I'm just angry that they lied to us. I trusted them. Have another brownie. They think we are really stupid. That's what makes me so angry. They think they can lie to us and tell us some kind of fairy story about clouds and uh, windows. Uh, oh, that's better. 
I know there is no way out of this cloud. We are lost in space forever, and we will never get home. I am not as stupid as they think. Well, we're not going to need the both of you, so uh, you go and rest and I'll call you later, okay? Oh, all right. The anaesthetic's gonna make her blood pressure drop down further. We need to get her head down. And Helinda, will you turn up the drip again, please? Yeah. Rosie, can you open that package and don't touch anything inside it? Shouldn't we check her reactions every time we increase the rate? Just do it, will you? We haven't got time for any of that now. strength is beginning to decay. Particle cloud optical absorption thickness now 2,000 meters. Attention. What's the blood pressure read? 74 over 40. Right, keep watching for me. For God's sake, keep back and don't touch anything. Sorry. Transverse right, iliac incision. And we're going to have to put a drain in. Right then. Attention. Receiving YNS localization signal. Jupiter disc identified. Oh, 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 oh. 